Ali. And then the next two lines you sing exactly the same as me. Oleo. 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 Mama. Okay, so you remember your answer for the first one? Ole mama. Okay. And look, I've never seen an African stand still when they're singing. So I don't want to see anybody standing still. Okay. Omali. No, ole mama. Omali. Ole mama. Ole yo. Ole mama. Omale. Omale. Ole yo. Ole yo. Ole yo. Ole yo. mama. Omale. Omale. Ole yo. Ole yo. Ole yo. mama. Often uh, start a session with that song, especially after afternoon tea or uh, after after lunch. And um, I was teaching a course in Bali in the uh, '99. It got EDEP and all that stuff started. We had 37 participants from all over Indonesia there, and there was one participant uh, from the Penang. He had to walk six hours through the jungle to get to the nearest village that had a bus connection for the five hour journey to the town where there was, he could catch a boat for the three day journey across to the north of Bali, for the 20 hour bus journey across to the south of Bali. And he loved that course, he was taking it home. He loved that, that, um, that song. So I've often thought, you know, maybe in 50, 100 years time there'll be some anthropologist you know, studying the Penang tribes in the jungles of Borneo, wondering how on earth this African song got there. <laughs> it, um, yeah, just sort of introducing myself. Um, this is my mountain. Uh, it's called Blue Knob. Uh, the different parts of it have got different names in the local Weeble language. And uh, so this is sort of the heart of Weeble country in the Bunjalung Nation. Uh, this is my river. Um, the one on the left is my river, the Wilson, which joins up with the Great Richmond River in northern New South Wales. And uh, this is my little patch of uh, Bunjalung country that I'm nurturing back as a sanctuary of sustainability and abundance. Uh, it was uh, designed as a permaculture training centre and we've got a permaculture eco-village, uh, Jalambar, next door. And a wonderful community, um, uh, the wider community of Nimbin is doing all sorts of amazing things. But um, my focus today is on the accredited training. And I've been teaching permaculture uh, since 1985, actually, uh, there's two people here who did the very first PDC I ever taught in 1985 in Sydney, uh, Russ and Fiona. And uh, it's just amazing seeing where people go. It's been incredibly inspiring over the years. I'm just I'm really curious, how many people here have actually done a course with me? And then keep your hand up if you're teaching others. That is so good. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it just keeps rippling out, doesn't it? And I think that's one of the 
the successes of, of permaculture has been the training, you know, empowering people with the knowledge, the information and the skills to be the change and make the difference not only in their own lives but in their communities, in whole nations, in whole bioregions. But what I found was the PDC, I really love it, I still teach it, I will always continue to teach it while it still gives me joy and a buzz. As soon as it feels mundane and I'm being a parrot saying the same old thing, then I'll stop. But while it gets my juices going, I'll continue. Um, but what I found um, after some years of teaching the PDC, I'd come across people who'd done one. It gave them a lot of information, it gave them a lot of inspiration, but there was just this huge deep layer of skills and detailed knowledge that you can't impart in 72 hours. And coming across people going along convoluted journeys trying to pick up the knowledge and the skills to really be effective. Uh, so in the early 90s, I started teaching advanced courses beyond the PDC, uh, teacher training, design skills, uh, sustainable aid, and various other ones. Um, then it was a few years after we'd been doing this that the conversation began at our convergences about whether or not to go for accrediting permaculture training within the accreditation system. And it took 10 years of discussion and dialogue. And uh, then in the early um, noughties, uh, I think it was actually a gathering that we had of uh, permaculture trainers at Janbung Gardens in 2001, um, 2002, around then that we made the unanimous decision to go for it because uh, quite a few changes had come in to the, vet, the vocational education and training system in Australia which made it possible for us to register and accredit a course and for it to be owned by the permaculture community because that had always been the uh, reservation uh, that people had, well look, you know, if it it suddenly belongs to the government, we lose control. So there was actually that possibility for us to accredit, own and operate our own course. So um, the APT, uh, Accredited Permaculture Training, is accredited vocational training under ASQA, the Australian Standards Quality Assurance. And they are the accreditation authority for all the vocational uh, training in Australia. So all your uh, trade skills, certificates, diplomas and stuff like that. So now we've got a full suite of nationally recognised qualifications in permaculture. Uh, students who are enrolled for full-time studies are eligible for AUSTudy, which is the Government Student Living Allowance. Uh, they don't qualify for support with the course fees, uh, so they still need to pay for those, but they do get their uh, living allowance for the time that they're studying. So it makes it a lot more accessible and affordable for people. And so the APT is owned by Permaculture International Limited, uh, being the one national um, entity that we had, which is a not-for-profit and democratically based organisation. And so PIL owns and administers the APT on behalf of the Australian permaculture community. And I've got to acknowledge the rest of the team here that uh, got the original APT together. Uh, so along with myself, Virginia Solomon from Victoria, Ian Lillington, who those days was based in South Australia, Janet Millington from Queensland and Guy Rishmuller, who was our consultant. So uh, it was um, accredited in 2003, then we needed to train the trainers and uh, wrap our heads around all the red tape of accredited training. And of course, you know, there's Everything works both ways, you know. There's a good and a bad side to everything and you've got to outweigh it all. 
And uh, so while you know, it has increased a lot of paperwork and stuff for us, the results, I feel, are worth it. But uh, just very quickly, how it works is that you know, we're registered with uh, ASQA, that's that peak body up the top there. It's owned by Permaculture International, uh, so they are bubble on the, on the uh, left here. And um, then registered training organisations get a licence from PIL to deliver. They um, have to use APT approved trainers, so we've got our approved trainers register. And also independent permaculture organisations or individuals can partner with a licensed RTO to deliver the training. And so we do have some courses being offered in the TAFE system. We've got a couple of TAFEs that have got uh, licenses to deliver. Uh, more are interested in doing that and uh, just in the process of getting their local permaculturalists uh, with all the relevant qualifications to embark on that. But we've also got independent uh, permaculture colleges like ourselves. Uh, at Janbung Gardens, Permaculture College Australia, and we partner, for example, with the Byron Community College. So that's just a little insight into how it's structured. But what I want to share with you initially, before we look more at the training, is just a few stories of people who have done this training. So um, Tony uh, did her Certificate 4 with us just last year. She had actually done a PDC some years before in Europe and been woofing around Europe, but she'd never been in one place long enough to actually harvest anything that she'd ever planted. Um, she didn't know, you know, there was still a lot she needed to know about plants, how to actually draw up plants, all this sort of stuff. Uh, she just did an amazing job. We had to invent an award to acknowledge her excellence. So uh, last year we uh, gave the first Student of the Year <coughs> Award for Outstanding Achievement to Tony. And now she's working as a co-manager in Thailand at the Rak, what is it, Rak Tanachat uh, project. She's coordinating their workers and interns. She's uh, doing the community and team building side of things there. Also um, working on design and implementing teaching workshops and just recently finished co-teaching a PDC. Um, Chris and Jesse. Uh, also, uh, Chris finished his diploma with us last year, and Jesse did a Certificate 4 with us last year. Uh, they're now working in Kampuchea, or Cambodia, and uh, at, a, at a retreat centre, designing and implementing gardens and uh, using all the bamboo building skills that they learned at Janbung Gardens and training and coordinating volunteers. Uh, this is a story from somewhere else. I'm not the only apt trainer around. Uh, this is a story from the uh, National Environment Centre, which is a campus of TAFE. And they're offering a correspondence uh, certificate for online. And uh, I was sent this story. Uh, from Penelope, who uh, transformed a 12-acre property in Tasmania. And uh, this is, uh, I've just quoted something that she wrote to me, and she said, even after completing a PDC, turning a 12-acre bush block in Tasmania into a thriving permaculture property seemed daunting. Completing the accredited permaculture certificate for over the course of 12 months gave me the framework I needed to do just that. I was able to complete each topic in the course while designing and establishing the system, applying the information that I was absorbing and trusting in the results. Completing the Certificate 4 also gave me the confidence to teach. I started small with free composting courses for community members. Since then, I've taken more than 75 students through an introduction to permaculture weekend course, have been guest speaker for several gardening clubs and conduct garden tours for permaculture students and community members on a regular basis. Yeah. And we've got Guy's story, and Guy's right here. 
And actually you can hear more of his story uh, later this afternoon and he'll be talking about the work he's been doing uh, employed after he got his diploma in permaculture. And uh, it was actually the day we completed his final assessment that he got the phone call saying that he got the job as uh, the, um, the coordinator for the Nimbin Food Security Project. And uh, they so impressed with his work, they've kept him on as a community development officer for the Sustainable Nimbin Plan. And um, uh, we have him down at Janbung Gardens teaching our APT students uh, in um, appropriate technology and energy systems and computer assisted design and how to use SketchUp and things like that. And so make sure you c connect up with his presentation this afternoon. It's at 1.30 in room 8. 1.30 in room 8, there you go. No excuses. <laughs> uh, Charlie's story. Uh, Charlie had also previously done a PDC in uh, WA, very inspired, but um, just felt he lacked the, the detailed, in-depth skills to really do what he wanted to do and do it well. And uh, he's now back in Fremantle, and this guy's rocking. Uh, he says, you know, since doing my Cert 3 in permaculture and teacher training at Janbung Gardens last year, I've rocketed myself into teaching an intro to PC and a PDC course, received government funding for the Permaculture Musical Cabaret Roadshow and DVD of songs about the 12 permaculture principles targeted primarily at young people and children. Uh, he's co-convener of the Frio Permies uh, the local permaculture group there, uh, curator of the Fremantle Seed Collective, the first community seed bank in the city of Fremantle, and designing a half-acre permaculture community garden in Pemberton. And uh, here we can see, um, I've got a short video of one of Charlie's songs to share with you, because uh, uh, one of the things that they need to do, of course, is to learn to present and communicate with the public and research and so uh, one of their projects is they have to give a presentation on a permaculture principle. He did his in song and then it evolved into a video. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> we really encourage the creativity. It's wonderful, isn't it? And um, you can find that on YouTube if you want to share it with your friends. Okay, so I'm always being asked, what's the relationship of the PDC to the APT? And so um, I hope this sort of just helps to give a little bit of a visual. Uh, the PDC, of course, is a 72-hour program. Most of us like to spend more on it. Whereas the Certificate 3 in permaculture is 700 plus hours. And about you know, 50, 60 percent of that would actually be contact hours. And the rest is self-directed uh, project work and, and study. Uh, the Certificate 4 is around about 900 hours, uh, the Diploma about 1,100 hours. So you can see it's a lot more. It gives that opportunity to go into far more depth and to really get the knowledge and the practical skills to make a difference. But uh, the Certificate 3, 4 and Diploma pretty much require a PDC or equivalent as foundation knowledge training. So we didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We incorporated it into the design of the accredited training. So when we start our full-time accredited training at Janbun Gardens at the beginning of the year, the first half semester, we're doing the PDC two days a week. And um, Looking at vocational training, somebody just uh, during the break said, what is vocational training? Well, uh, vocational training is training that prepares us for a vocation, a particular type of work. And uh, in the old days, we used to have the trade certificates. And so it's sort of what the qualifications that you get at a polytech or in, a, in Australia, we call it TAFE. And the, it's different to university training, which is more academic. So uh, it's competency-based, which um, focuses on developing the skills required in the applications of that particular profession, in this case, permaculture. There's knowledge is an important part of it, and that supports good practice. And competence builds confidence. There's different levels of training, so people come in at the level at which they want to operate. And so these target different skill sets. And as a result, support a whole range of different career pathways. Now, um, a unit of competency is, um, well, a competency, a set of competencies makes up a qualification at a particular level of operation. And so a competency or unit describes a typical workplace task and then describes the knowledge and the skills that are required to do that task and it gives assessment standards for the trainer assessor to determine whether the student is competent in that particular task. It was a big struggle for the team to change our thinking because the PDC is so knowledge-based. And people were saying, oh, but we've got to have swales in there. And Guy Rishmuller was brilliant. He'd just say, why? Because you've got to have swales. But why? 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 for managing water. Ah, so it's water management. Swales is one of the techniques. And so, you know, you've, you, it's a whole other way of thinking, not only about permaculture, but about training in terms of outcomes, what people can do, what are the knowledge and skills that enable us to do a particular job. 
And so at each level, we've got core units and elective units. So um, I'll just um, introduce you quickly to the different qualification levels, but then I'll focus on the Certificate 3 to Diploma. So the Certificate 1 is very basic, and uh, it's in terms of workplace, because uh, being vocational training, we had to tie everything to workplace situations, so it's somebody that's fully supervised in the workplace. But it's designed really for high school students, junior high school. Um, for uh, if we're working with, say, refugee communities, English as a second language, people with learning difficulties, and so, you know, very basic skills, but it still covers everything. They still get to know about their bioregion as well as how to plant plants without killing them and care for animals and all that sort of stuff. Uh, certificate two is like your skilled worker that uh, can work under routine supervision but doesn't need to be watched all the time. Uh, if you think of the skill set that you're perfect ideal woofer would have. Okay, and this is also great for high school students and uh, for community gardeners and uh, people that just want to get, you know, permaculture gardens happening in their backyard and stuff like that. Then we get into what we call more the trade uh, level qualifications. So the certificate three uh, is your independent operator. Uh, you know, your permaculture uh, landscaper and uh, so forth. The certificate four, the focus shifts more into design, being able to contract, supervise, uh, project officer in community um, programs. And the diploma is of more at that management level, high level consultant and design. So uh, we'll just. Um, Tying these to actual work opportunities, what kind of vocations, what kind of jobs? So we're finding that uh, our APT training is ideal for people that are getting employed as community garden coordinators and community project officers, um, providing and developing their own consulting and design services. Uh, we seem to be producing a lot of fantastic permaculture teachers and it gives people the skills to set up their own permaculture enterprises. We've got permaculture landscapers that are running businesses. Um, some of our students are getting jobs actually as managers of farms and uh, many of them are involved in overseas development work. So. I'll just give you a quick overview of the certificate, um, the higher level certificates in terms of the actual competencies. I've just sort of summarised these into a few key words, but how to research and communicate information about permaculture and you know, um, maintaining uh, integrated plant and animal systems, how to do site inspections, site analysis and soil testing and analyse the results of your soil tests and how to establish uh, urban and rural systems, uh, planting organic garden and orchard food forests, um, maintaining and harvesting crops, uh, preparing and storing permaculture products, installing water systems and permaculture structures and appropriate technology and all that sort of stuff. How to use weedy plants. I'll go into this one a little bit more in a moment. It's fun, that unit. Uh, controlling pests and diseases and coordinating community projects. Okay, now um, I'll just, we'll compare that to the certificate four. So you can now sort of see how the different certificates pitch at different levels of work. So at the certificate four, um, it's providing advice about permaculture uh, principles and practices and um, managing a permaculture seed bank, which includes all the you know, uh, nitty gritty skills of how to collect and save seed, but how to manage the seed bank as well and pull the community together analysing our bioregional characteristics and resources and developing uh, strategies for sustainable community and bioregional development, transition towns, stuff like that. 
uh, working with cultural and human diversity because a lot of our work is involved with people from different ethnic um, backgrounds and work with indigenous communities. Uh, so you can see that the social side of things, the community skills, is quite a, an important focus. Designing harvesting and storage systems, um, designing urban and rural systems, appropriate technology systems, promoting community programs. And then we come into the diploma, uh, where yeah, we've got the design and the giving advice, developing strategic plans, um, researching and interpreting projecting requirements, including legislation and council requirements and things like that. So it's a much higher level of operation. Um, planning and supervising implementation of systems, project management, uh, field research, which can be you know, on plants and animals. It can also be on social research. Um, marketing products and services, which is important for organisations you work with, projects you work with, as well as operating your own business. Uh, developing community and bioregional strategies, uh, community governance and decision making, and facilitating participatory planning and learning. And these aren't all the units that are available. These are the ones that we tend to offer. And we have a balance between the social systems and community and people skills, along with the nitty gritty, you know, um, on the land and gardening and technology and plants and animals and all that stuff. Uh, whereas the National Environment Centre, their focus is more on production systems. So uh, they um, bring into the diploma and the certificate for some of the units from the organic. Uh, production uh, certification and diploma. And so different centres will have a slightly different focus in the skill set that they uh, provide uh, for their students. So just getting a little sort of glimpse into some of these competency, like you know, design, uh, uh, whether it's a rural or an urban system, uh, there's a whole heap of things that you need to be able to do. And so I've just got a short list there of some of the knowledge and skill requirements in the design units, uh, like client communications and how to develop briefs and do a site analysis and re surveying and research and bio, you know, look at the bioregional context, design graphics. In a lot of the design professions, permaculture is a joke. Oh, one in 100. You know, how many people can actually work to scale and deliver a professional looking design? And if you, you know, really want to work and change things and put in proposals to councils and stuff like that, it's got to look real. And so how to do their concept plans and their detail plans and their construction drawings and develop their bills of quantity and cost it all out and, and you know, prepare quotes and do the implementation plans and strategies and maintenance plans and uh, re write reports and the computing skills and, and all the other knowledge of the systems that goes with that because you can't do all this without knowing the plants and the animals and everything else. So that just gives you a little insight into the depth that we go so that you can see it's taking things a quantum leap beyond the PDC. Um, we've got some fun units that I really love, like the harvest and store permaculture products. And so there we're teaching our students to plan for a year-round supply of food, whether it's domestic or whether it's for conducting a CSA. You know, you plant something here, you start planting there, harvesting then, and you know, getting these annual planning uh, schedules, uh, planting and harvest schedules sorted out understanding the biology and the physiology of senescence, how plants and products degrade after you harvest them, what damages them, what keeps them um, fresh, how to store, you know, post-harvest handling, uh, storage systems for your fresh crops, for your root crops, how to create clamp stores, and um, how to preserve and ferment and conserve and 
uh, not only your plant products but also plant um, animal products and food and fibre and utility crops and and you know making there's one of our students there with a fish smoking device that she made from uh, just uh, stuff that was an old microwave oven I think that she found somewhere and converted that into a fish smoker and building a solar food de dehydrator and uh, they learn about this and its application not only to domestic but also commercial systems so with our bioregional campus we go and visit some of the uh, commercial organic uh, farms in the area and just see what's involved with the infrastructure that you need uh, to do these things. And, um, you know, use weedy plants uh, is uh, lots of fun, so you need your basic botany and how to identify plants and the classifications of weeds and organic control measures and succession and, you know, about the dynamic accumulation and all your nutrients and, and using them as soil indicators and the different ways that you can manage weeds, what you can do with them, creating weed teas, the ones you can eat, the ones you can feed to the animals, the one you can turn into medicines and make ointments with, the ones that you can craft with and weave baskets and yeah, so we have lots of fun uh, learning all this stuff. Um, and at the, particularly at the Cert 4 and diploma level, uh, we do a lot with community and facilitation skills and how to promote things. Um, actually, on Tuesday when I get back home, the students, last year's diploma students, are facilitating a participatory planning workshop uh, with this year's uh, Certificate 4 and uh, 3 students. And so they'll be planning out and organising our annual open day and they'll be preparing all the promotion, the promotional strategy, the press releases, the posters, how to get, you know, the, the, the social media strategy. Uh, they'll be planning the program. They've all got to do the workshops and the tours and sort that out. The static displays, uh, the canteen, and of course the whole day is a fundraising for student resources and uh, the menu and the rostering and all that sort of stuff. So they get a lot of skills. They, can, they know how to organise events and they know how to promote um, programs through that whole process. They've got to be organised, they've got to conduct meetings and they learn how to conduct meetings and take minutes and reporting and recording and building networks. And then we have um, creative community facilitation uh, module in semester two where they go deeper into facilitation skills and um, working with human and cultural diversity and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, we apply it to real life situations as much as we can. And that's why I'm so passionate about this whole idea of the bioregional campus. The campus is not just Janbung Gardens and our beautiful training centre there and the lovely living landscape. It's the whole bioregion. And our students have that opportunity for real life experience in the community, uh, doing design for real life clients uh, in the community, doing perma blitzes. Uh, our students have, some of our students have been working with our local schools, developing school gardens and with the local preschool and kindergarten. Um, and others get involved in local community gardens or the f local Nimbin food security initiatives and other community programs and events. Uh, we have lots of field visits where we go to uh, different permaculture farms and organic producers. We've got our local uh, dryland rice producer there and uh, our local Nimbin Valley Dairy that has um, these lovely goats and make beautiful goats cheeses and cow cheeses and pop over to Byron Bay and visit Jude and Michelle at Seed Savers and um, intentional communities, urban systems and we've got this amazing pool of guest speakers and tutors and 
uh, people we get in to do workshops on beekeeping, biochar, blacksmithing and reviving some of these really important survival arts and skills. So it's not just vocational training, it's, it's really, we're just using that as the excuse and the umbrella for training for transition, for training for life. Um, and, you know, on the bush foods and legal systems and renewable energy systems, we've got Rainbow Power Company there and we've got our local eco plumbers and, you know, the, uh, some of the uh, people, we've got permaculturalists that have been involved in the university and right on top of the latest stuff with, you know, wastewater treatment and composting toilet design and so, yeah, it's, um, it's, wonderful you know being in a bioregion and having that resource and just really building those bridges so that uh, it's actually a, it's a holistic living learning community and usually around about 40 percent of the students might be living on site others may be local people or find accommodation locally or have part wolf arrangements on some of the communities around but it's so important that uh, education is engaging the head, the heart and the hands. We've got to, it's got to be a whole person thing. And we see incredible personal transformations during uh, the two semester program. And uh, people going away just as really amazing confident beings that have grown internally as well as intellectually and uh, with their ability to do things. So with the head development it's you know the knowledge, the earth sciences, it's the systems thinking, it's being able to analyze and problem solve and calculate and research and communicate information. On the heart level it's you know the ethics, tying everything back to ethics uh, providing opportunity for that deeper connection with nature, um, having space for discussion and philosophy and people care and community and helping people in that transition from me to we thinking and uh, also nurturing the creativity and providing the space for them to find their passion and to pursue that. And then of course with the hands, the nitty gritty practical skills and experience with the plants and the animals and the gardening and the building and the appropriate technology systems and how to make a rocket stove and uh, how to draw, uh, crafting, cooking, preserving and uh, turning the compost and dealing with the issues of the composting toilet and, <laughs> and so yeah it was my vision and passion for many years to uh, sort of create a, uh, an environment where people could really immerse themselves in meaningful education, education for life, uh, education to share, to build community and to build a better world. And uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful journey and training up now the next generation of the APT trainers. And uh, it's all good stuff. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> So there's a lot of information on the Permaculture Australia website. Um, Permaculture International is now trading as Permaculture Australia. And on the website you will f there's documents that you can download that have got the uh, units of competency at all the different APT levels and uh, more information about just the, how the whole process works with the licensing, the uh, teacher qualifications and stuff. And you can also check out uh, what we're doing at um, Janbung Gardens Permaculture College Australia at our website. 
And if any of you, um, especially Australians, want to connect in with what's happening with Permaculture Australia, mm -hmm. tomorrow uh, we have a, a session while the PINS AGM is happening. And so uh, there's a couple of directors here from PIL and our webmaster and some of our support uh, personnel. So uh, we'd love to connect and update you on what's happening there with that. Yeah. Is there a New Zealand equivalent of the way to go to um, New Zealand equivalent. I've heard there's a sustainable... And then, as, as New Zealand as you can study in Australia, you just don't get the student allowance. There's one other kind of equivalent, and that's North Tech Sustainable Rural Development Courses. Mm -hmm. They're offered level two and level three. They're free. Mm. Hmm.